So I will introduce myself and introduce my expert today. So on my side, I am Leah. I am the marketing manager at FEC. And I'm very pleased to welcome you, Agneta. You are pre-sales consultant at FEC and you will be managing this English webinar today, uh, targeting our marketing customers. The floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you, Leah, and thank you for helping me host this webinar. Very much appreciated. Yes, and welcome everyone. I'm Agneta, and as mentioned, I'm one of the pre-sales consultants here at FEC. Some of you listening in might already have met me as I get the opportunity to work with many different brands and companies in a variety of industries and I meet both existing customers and prospects. So extra hello to you if we met before. And in this webinar, uh, you will discover how the FSC marketing tool, also known as Apsis One, as you already know, uh, most of you at least, uh, that Apsis One is now an FSC product. So um, I might refer to it as FSC marketing or Apsis One during the webinar. But it's one and the same. Uh, but we will also deep dive into how a connection to the FSE CRM will give you foundation uh, to create successful data-driven and digital marketing campaigns where you can automate customer journeys for efficient nurturing and, of course, conversion. During the coming approximately 40 minutes, um, you will get an introduction to the combination of the two platforms. It is not a demo of Apsis One, and it's not a demo of the FSC CRM. It's more a presentation of what you can accomplish if you have both and a connector in between. But I would also like to mention, of course, that if you are interested in knowing more of, about any of these platforms, just reach out and we are happy to give you a proper demonstration of either one of them. All right, but let's get started. And I will start with a presentation and then we will also do some live uh, demonstration of some features and functionalities. So just before we go further, um, I will just precise that you can ask all the questions you would like to in the questions box. So we will answer them at the end of the webinar. Yes, thank you, Leah. All right, the agenda is as follows. Uh, we will talk a bit about marketing automation about digital marketing and data-driven marketing. What is it? Is it just fancy words or does it really mean true success? Then we'll uh, focus a bit on the benefits with connecting your CRM and your marketing solution. And in our case, of course, it's the FSC CRM and our own FSC marketing platform, Apps is one. We will do a bit of demonstration of the combination uh, of FSC CRM and Apps is one when they are connected and the possibilities that brings. And then we'll uh, do a bit of a summary and Q&A session at the end. I hope that's all right, because that's the plan. So what is marketing automation? Um, is it just a buzzword or is it, does it mean anything? Well, basically, it's the process of using software and technology to automate marketing workflows and provide a personalized experience to every customer while being both proactive and reactive. Um, and that could be to automate things to be proactive. If you know that two weeks after buying a specific product, the customers always call customer service and say, oh, I lost um, the manual. You can be proactive and have that automated. So two weeks after that specific purchase, an email is sent with a copy of the manual. You're being proactive. But you can also be uh, reactive and make good use of uh, the marketing automation possibilities, uh, triggering on uh, activities where the starting point is an interaction or an event with this specific contact. But we also need to take into consideration the evolution of digital marketing. What is digital marketing? Well, it's basically any marketing that is happening online on the internet. And the advantages with that, of course, as you all know, is uh, endless. You can do a lot of things because internet is global, it's worldwide. 
It's quick and fast and easy to use. And as I mentioned while we were waiting for you to join this webinar, I wish I could see you all in person, but I can't. But this is digital marketing. We're doing it online. We're using the internet as one of the powerful um, tools to help broadcast our message. And then we also have the word data-driven marketing. What does that really mean? And how can we make it um, a powerful tool for us to create success? Basically, it's connected to, to using the data that we have at hand um, to target the right group of people, to ensure that we are on track, always being relevant, not wasting people's time with uh, messages that they don't care about. But if we can be if we can use the data that we have, we can be on time with the precise message that the contact is actually looking for. Again, being both proactive and reactive in this. And the evolution has been um, over, I don't know, 20, 30 years maybe, with the, uh, with the internet being um, used in, in a variety of ways. Back in the days, it was considered um, magic, the fact that we could send one email, the same email, to thousands, millions of uh, recipients, and we could actually see how they're interacting with, with the emails. That was where it all started. Uh, but the way the world looks now and what the market is expecting is so much more. We have the social media, we have our website, we have, um, we're always on the run. We have different devices. We have our tablets, our mobiles, maybe more than one mobile phone um, as well. And we're constantly exposed to a lot of information through different channels. And as a, a, a marketeer, uh, and you want to do sales, you want to help, help sales uh, be successful. We need to take all of this into consideration and work in a modern and efficient way using marketing automation, doing digital marketing, but also ensuring that it's data driven. A bit of history, um, and we have a lot of data, 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 and we have data from all different places, and the data can be hosted in different locations. You might have an ERP system, you might have a CRM, CMS, uh, or any kind of business analytical tools where you host a lot of data. It's just everywhere. Um, but it doesn't make any, it doesn't create any success if it's just kept in silos. But it needs to be the foundation of our communication. And it needs to be related to the topic um, of today, of course, uh, but also the interactions and in our marketing activities. So how can we be uh, efficient and effective? How can we combine this data and use it in a smart way? Of course, the data needs to be up to date, clean and relevant to the purpose. Um, I was hoping that I didn't have to mention the four uh, letters, GDPR, but yeah, we have to do that because we are also working with consent-based marketing. So of course, we also need to ensure that we have consent for the kind of marketing activities and the data processing that we're doing. Okay, so when we talk about marketing automation, one of the main uh, areas is lead nurturing. It's a way to help our leads, uh, any, any contact uh, looking for information, wanting to do business with us, uh, but to nurture them through the process to go from um, an unknown, unqualified lead to maybe a marketing qualified lead or a sales qualified lead. So we want to help them through the sales funnel and their buying journey. It's essential so that we can engage potential buyers and also, at the end, provide qualified prospects for sales. We want to do business. So some statistics, what does it really mean? Why is it important to do this? Why should we use marketing automation to nurture the leads? Well, statistics show that we get um, an increase in qualified leads, quite significant. We also know that 4 to 7% make larger purchases when they're nurtured when not which also is significant numbers. You can do the math on your side here. And we also see that 10% increase in revenue over six to nine months, meaning that they buy more over time. 
So we just let that sink in for a while. This is money. We also need to take into, consider, into consideration people's time. We spend a lot of time doing things and we don't want to waste time. We want to be efficient. So what difference does nurturing really make in this sense? Well, we know that a lot of buyers do a lot of researching uh, independently. They search online and they do research, of course, offline, talking to friends, families, colleagues, um, maybe they know people since before. Uh, so they start doing this um, heavy researching. And if we put it together, uh, the 27 and the 18 percent that they do researching independently, it's actually 45 percent of the time where they do research. Only 17 percent of the time is actually spent meeting potential suppliers. So if we have uh, really good salespeople, those 17 percent will generate a lot of business. But if we can work together and also make good use of the 45% of the buyer's time that they spend researching, then that's success. So if we can nurture them through this search for information by having download material, uh, forms, sign up here and get our five best tips and tricks, uh, how to use our products, uh, what value can we bring uh, to your business, download this white paper and present it to your stakeholders and so forth. So we can help them um, doing the research by presenting material at the right time. And this can be fully automated, just using the interactions on the website and connected to some marketing automation flows. So with marketing automation made right, it will give you a lot of uh, good things uh, at the end. We know we've been in this business for a very long time and with we, I say maybe Apsis because we've been doing email marketing for, for quite some time, since 2001. We, we see that the open rates in emails sent through marketing automation is five times higher. And that's quite substantial numbers. We also know that these emails get 15 times higher click-through rates meaning that the engagement in this email, these emails are much higher. And research um, also shows from, from um, for example, Forrester, that it also uh, gives us four times more sales. And again, this is actual money that we see. It's not just numbers. So with the right tool at hand, doing this right, it will definitely boost your sales and give you better uh, potential to close uh, big business. Another thing that we need to maybe consider a while is marketing automation is, is fine and it's, it's very often used by the marketing department. But we also need to ensure that we go, get the whole uh, business on the same track. So this picture kind of illustrates the way that we need to work together to keep the boat in the right direction. Everybody needs to know where we're going and everybody needs to be focused on going uh, to the same uh, end point. So it only takes one of these guys to do mistakes or choosing another direction, a different rhythm or using different power and this boat will turn in a different direction. And I've been talking a bit about sales and marketing, and I also kind of mentioned uh, support, uh, that instead of having um, the, the buyers of your product calling support to get the copy of the manual, you can automate it. But this also involves IT or uh, the financial department. We can help them a lot, uh, making sure that they spend the time on the right things, helping us focus to go in the right direction by automating uh, tasks also um, on their side. If we know that uh, a reminder of an invoice is needed to get, the, get it paid, then we can automate that reminder of that invoice. If we know that a cus after they've called support, we would like to get um, a rating, we can automate that email. Uh, so it's easy to, uh, to send feedback and so forth. It goes across the whole business. Even though we're focusing on marketing and sales, 
let's keep all the other areas um, as part of the discussion as well. All right, um, marketing automation or marketing digital data-driven means the right message at the right time to the right profiles through the right channel. This sounds really fancy and really easy to accomplish. Is it really? Well, let's see. We need to find out who should we target? What should we send? What kind of message? Why? What do we want to accomplish? How can we measure it? How do we know that we're doing the right thing? When should we send it? And how should we do this? Five important questions. And with using the data-driven methodology, we have we can look at the, the total audience, meaning all the people that you can reach through your digital channels. Quite a lot of people, and you know the spray and pray uh, where you just took a message and you, you send it to everybody and just hope for success. That was in the past. The future is being smart about it. So we have the total audience, but not everybody needs or wants the same message. So how can we be smart? Well, by using data from, for instance, your CRM, from your marketing activities, how they're interacting with your messages, maybe even website visits. What are they actually looking for right now? Purchases, what kind of purchases have they done historically? And what are they up to now? Have they signed up to receive any communication? Have they signed up to specific webinars maybe? Have they downloaded material? Have they participated in events? Have we had any kind of activities with this contact through any of our channels? If we take all of that into consideration, then maybe the audience to target is just four people, but it's the right audience. So instead of spraying and praying, we target the right audience using the data that we have at hand. So can we unleash the power of marketing automation in combination with, for instance, a CRM, which is the focus of today? Well, yes, by doing a connection between these two, we can avoid the data silos. We have a lot of data um, in the CRM, a lot of interactions, tasks, historical data, up-to-date data. Maybe they called yesterday. If we can unify all that data, we can also achieve seamless customer journeys. The customers will know that we are on top of their data. We can also automate communication and actions. So instead of doing manual work, looking at profiles manually, we can automate some of these uh, communication and actions. And again, we can be proactive. We can be timely because we know when they're interacting with us. Um, I said, sometimes say that the best time to broadcast is when you have their attention. So if they're actually visiting your website, make use of that. See if you can get them to fill out the form or download material, and if you can help them somehow doing this research. It also helps you to be personal and accurate because the data is up to date. And again, going back to where we started to nurture uh, will also convert to qualified leads. And this will, at the end, um, have us enjoy a higher engagement in the communication. And remember the boat with the people rowing. We need to bring functions and departments closer together, that we share the same view, that we all know uh, the, the perfect customers or what kind of marketing activities is going on now. What are we, what's our vision? What's our main goal? Let's bring it together and share the same view of, of the customer or the contact, the prospect. So now it's time to have a look at what could this look like if you have the FSC CRM and your marketing platform, Apsis One, the FSC marketing tool, connected with our plug and play connector in place. Let's switch over. I'm going to change my window. Here we go. A very, very, very efficient way to convert an unknown visitor on your website to be a known contact that you can interact with 
is publishing a form on your website or in any of your social media channels as well. So you can ask for simple information. In this case, I will expose my email address to you. Um, could be used to send me emails. But in this case, I'm going to use it to register a subscription. And we can pretend that this is now um, a form on the website where it says, are you looking for information? Are you finding it hard to choose? Why don't you give us your email address and download our five best tips and tricks how to use our products? Or as I mentioned previously, do you need um, some presentation to bring to your stakeholders uh, to promote a purchase from us? Why don't you just fill out the email address and we will send you an automated email with um, our, a summary of what you can bring to the table. So I will register my subscription and it will say thank you. Fairly easy and, and quick. So what is happening in the background here? I've been talking about digital marketing, I've been talking about data-driven marketing and marketing automation. So let's have a look at the marketing automation tool. So to automate this, to ensure that we're on track, that we're on time, again, sending the right message to, to the right audience at the right time uh, through the right channel, we will listen to this uh, submission of the form and send a thank you and welcome email. And again, if this had been a download form, this would have been the email with the download material. Now with the connector, in place to the CRM, we can already here create a task for sales or marketing or anyone else within the organization so that they can actually reach out or take the proper action based on the interactions here. So had this been, please provide us with your email address and uh, one of our salespeople will contact you to book a demo. The thank you email would have been sent and the task would have been created in the CRM for sales to reach out. Everything happens automatically. And it's based on the interaction uh, from the contact. So I'm gonna open this just to give you a, a quick view of what it could look like. Um, so this will send a notification to sales team. It will also create a deadline date to ensure that sales is on time reaching out so we don't leave the a contact hanging, waiting for a contact. And again, all of this happens automatically. And we also get some statistics because again, the connector makes it easy for us to see this information unified. And then we can give um, this flow a certain value because again, we want to make sure that what we do creates value for the business and that it keeps us on track. Again, we're rowing the same boat, same direction. And I, as a profile, a contact, I filled out the form. What happened in the marketing platform first and foremost? Let's have a look. So this is me. This is my, my details. And since I am an existing contact in the CRM, the information from the CRM is automatically synced through this connector, adding details to my profile. So we have my marketing activities, the fact that I signed up the form, I've been browsing the website, I've been interacting with marketing in their campaigns. We see that in the marketing tool, but we also see information um, about me as a, as a, maybe a lead or a member, a contact, a, a customer. We can see uh, the information that exists in the CRM as well. So we can see my title, for instance. One of the things that I also mentioned um, is you have your total audience, but you don't want to spray and pray. You don't want to send the same message to all your contacts. So we need to find a way to work with the data to find the right group of people. And we can do that in, in two main ways. Uh, if you have the connector between FSC CRM and uh, the marketing platform. We can work with segmentation within the marketing platform because all the data is available for the marketeer. So if I'm about to do a Christmas campaign maybe, and I want to make sure that I only target the ones 
where we don't have a meeting scheduled in December, I will have that data from uh, the CRM so I can create that segmentation already in the marketing platform and ensure that I reach the right target audience. I could also do the selection in the CRM where I maybe have more data. Maybe I want to exclude or include anyone who hasn't paid the invoice or um, I want to also add information about an, an invoice coming up or maybe add information about support, um, how to contact support if a customer hasn't been in contact with support the last six months. Maybe a little reminder, a little nudge. And that information is in the CRM. So then I'll do the selection in the CRM and just push the data over as tags and then use it in my marketing campaigns. So now we have two really uh, efficient and successful ways of segmenting uh, the total audience into the right audience. On my profile, I can see all the interactions from any kind of forms. So we can see that I submitted the form. We can also see whether I've been interacting in the emails. Um, and this is interesting. It's one of, uh, I would guess, one of the most used KPIs for email marketing is opens and clicks. And we get that data in the marketing platform, of course, but guess what? It's also available in the CRM because the interactions in the emails are also automatically synced over to the CRM. All right, let's, let's uh, let this thing sink in for a while and we will switch over to the FSC CRM. For some of you listening now, this might be the first time you see FSC CRM. And again, uh, this is not a demo of the platform itself. So if you're interested in getting to know more, just reach out to us and we will book a proper demo for you. Okay, now we looked at the profile in the marketing platform, which is, again, it's me. <laughs> um, and as we could see in the marketing platform as well, we also had the title. So again, this information is synced real time. So if I, for whatever reason, want to target only CEOs or marketing managers, I can use the title to create my segment in either of the platforms. We can see here which campaigns I have been um, part of, if I received newsletters, if I re filled out any forms, or if I received, for instance, uh, in this case, a webinar SMS reminding me to uh, take part in a, in a webinar. We mentioned also, or I mentioned, uh, that we need to, to work with consent-based marketing. And we are completely GDPR uh, compliant in both platforms. So we, use, we have uh, great opportunities for you to set up your consent management. And in the, uh, in the CRM, we work with what we call profiles, which is, um, uh, could be a marketing list, for instance, where we have consent for specific marketing campaigns. It could be newsletters. It could be information or updates that I'm subscribing to. Um, and it could also be that I want to receive any kind of emails uh, from, from you as a, as a company. And all this information is available to me as a contact. So we can see that I've decided to be part of a lot of communication. So if a sales guy now is trying to sell something to me, they would open up my profile and have a look before reaching out. They would see the campaign and the groups, the profile groups that I'm part of. Tasks will also be created automatically uh, through the connector. And as we could see in the marketing automation flow, when I filled out the form, I receive an email and the third step was actually a task creation in the CRM. And we can see that that just happened. I submitted the form just recently. I have a task for sales 
saying that I have completed this form submission. It could now say, please call this contact. Uh, this person has downloaded this material. Please follow up and ensure everything is fine. Um, this contact downloaded our five best um, tips and tricks to bring to the stakeholders. Maybe a decision to buy is uh, about to happen, so sales ensure that you call them. And in this specific task that is created, the information from, um, from the marketing platform is also carried over. So we get the deadline date, for instance, the urgency, and what kind of task that is created for sales. And again, this doesn't have to be sales. It could be finance, it's time to send the invoice, or this person is asking for a copy of an invoice, then the task is um, assigned to finance instead. I also mentioned that you can do your segmentation either in the marketing platform or you can do it in the CRM. If you want to do it in your CRM, you would use something called a query. So in this case, I created a marketing query where I want to create a campaign targeting only members. And I might want to add also whether they've been members for a specific uh, time period, if they're in a specific industry, if the, uh, the head office is located in Stockholm, because maybe I want to be able to go and see them. And if that information is not in the marketing platform, then I do the selection here and I just push it over. And the tag is automatically created on the profiles and I can send my message or I can trigger automated campaigns based on this specific selection. And again, everything happens automatically. We will now go back to the presentation mode. So bear with me here. And let's do a quick summarize. So there are some advantages that we, we did discover. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to mention that this connector between the two systems is really easy to use and easy to implement. You don't need all your IT resources and a heavy budget. It's a connector that is really easy to implement and easy to manage. You can do updates straight from the tool uh, and it's available for the marketeers to do, uh, quite handy. By connecting our CRM, where we want sales to be very um, efficient and effective working uh, with our customers or prospects, doing big business. But by connecting uh, the CRM with also the marketing activities, we bring these two closer together and we share the same view of who are our customers? What activities do we need to do to bring business to the company because we do want to work together. It's important for sales to know what marketing is doing and it's important for marketing to understand what they need to do to bring sales. We can also generate more qualified leads through this efficient nurturing process. So by having the information available, we would know when a contact is created in uh, the marketing platform, if you have forms on your website, for instance, we would know instantly if this is an existing customer or not. And if not, we can make some decision based on that information. If you are a customer, then we want to send you this information. And if you're not a customer yet, we will keep nurturing you. We can automate a lot of the communication. Uh, a lot of things that maybe now is done manually and kind of repetitive and time-wasting activities. We can bridge these gaps. Again, one of the examples I mentioned is two weeks after a certain purchase, support gets a phone call. Can we be proactive and send that manual before they have to call? Then that's definitely uh, bringing a better experience to the buyer of the product, 
but also helping support to focus on um, other support calls. We can act with timing, timing and accuracy because along with the information that we have in the CRM, we also have the interactions that is happening uh, in the emails, on the website, through our social channels, maybe the web forms, whatever uh, actions we have with our potential buyers or prospects, customers. Uh, we will be on time because we can act when things happen. We can automate internal business processes and create actions. So instead of marketing, sending an Excel file or a list or reaching out through email teams or phone call when there is a lead to act on, that can happen automatically. So the tasks are created, assigned to the right department within the company and actions can be taken um, straight away. And that will, of course, uh, free up resources to, to do maybe other um, actions that are creating value. Of course, we also need to measure success somehow, and, and we need to know that it's a return on investment on our marketing activities. And we can see that because we, we can see how much sales is generating from these actions. Everything is um, linked to the contact and the company and also the salesperson in charge in the CRM. So we will have a clear view on our uh, qualified leads and what is actually bringing sales. And of course, as marketing, one of the main uh, objectives we have uh, in marketing is helping to boost sales. Of course, creating brand awareness and helping these buyers in the process by providing the right content at the right time, enabling uh, them to do research uh, in an easy way. Maybe not having to spend 45% of the time, um, but rather providing them with the information that they need when they need it. So a lot of advantages. And to summarize, yes, digital marketing is definitely the future. Data-driven marketing, it's, it's, it's for real. It's needed, it's expected. If we have data about our customers, we should also use it in an efficient way. They are expecting us to do so. And marketing automation. Yeah, let's be proactive and reactive. Let's free up time. Let's ensure that we're not doing repetitive work and that we are providing information when requested by the people interacting with our brand. That's definitely a boost. And that's how we can unleash the power of marketing automation. That was about it, uh, what I had planned to present. So now it's time for questions, if there are any. How are we doing, Leia? Have we received we doing, any questions? Yeah, you're doing it perfectly. And we did have one question for now, for other ones. If you, might, if you do have other questions, don't hesitate to use the question tab in order to ask them so we can see it and answer it directly. Uh, one of the questions is a funny one, uh, so I will ask it to you, Agneta. Yes. Does Apsis One work with other CRM system? Yes, it does. Um, the principle remains, regardless which CRM system you have. So, of course, Apsis can be integrated to any CRM. And uh, the way of doing data-driven and digital marketing is the same. So wherever you host your data, ensure that they are connected. So if you're using Apsis One today and you have another system with data, it could be a CRM or an ERP, let's uh, have a discussion how we best can integrate these two to give you the best um, possibilities to be successful. So yes. Apsis One can be used with other CRMs as well. We have some plug and play connectors, and then we always have the API. Um, as we are now an FSC group having a CRM and a marketing automation, that's of course for us the better way to have for you a full and complete offer having both tools included. Another question for you, Agneta. Will you help to transfer data from an old CRM system 
to this FEC one. Of course, we will help you. One of the, the things that we do in the pre-sales um, process is ensuring that we give you the best uh, possibilities to be successful. So we will help you review the data and um, create a data structure and a data model that works best for you. Uh, the CRM is very flexible. So the view you, I shared now is from a demo account, but of course your real account would be adjusted to what, what you need. Uh, so you will have the entities that are right for you and the data model that is right for you. And we will help you um, move your data from any existing system into uh, FSC CRM. Thank you very much. Um, seems we do have uh, no more questions. Of course, if some other questions are popping up later, then you can uh, reach out to us directly so we can provide with more details and more information. And as Agneta told uh, at least twice during this webinar, this webinar was only to show you the benefits of the connector between APSIS-1 and FST CRM. However, if you would like to know more about one or another tool, then feel free to reach out directly to us so we can go more in details. I think we are perfect in timing, so if there are no other questions, then we can end it up for today. Thank you very much, Ad Agneta. And thank, thank you, you everyone for listening and for being with us today. Have a good day and talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.